Assalamu alaikum. My name is Salim Siddiqui and you're watching a HotConflict.com video series and we're talking about the importance of Eid, the great celebration of the Muslims or the great festival. And as you know from uh, your basic Islamic studies, the Muslims have two great festivals. One is at the end of Ramadan, the month where they fast, and uh, one is happening right now where Muslims all over the world have gathered together and bow and pray to the Lord Most High and also at the same time Muslims have gathered in the holy house in Mecca the one built by Abraham and his son Ishmael to worship the Lord four or five six million people gather every year and this is called the great Hajj as you might know it if you're a non-Muslim and this is the celebration of that day and so we're telling the story of why Eid or the great celebration is important and so far if you haven't been watching the series yet um, you've missed a lot in this story and as any story it's told from the beginning now I'm gonna give a disclaimer uh, again at the beginning of this episode because so far I've told you that I'm going to tell you the story and give you the truth of what is going on in the world that we live in and why it's important to you. And the nature of the truth is so strange that when you hear it, it sometimes can be very heavy on the soul. But we've been going over some of the concepts and we've gotten to the point in the story where things are going to get very, very dramatic and quite, quite spectacular. And so if you've been listening so far and you're thinking, wow, the stuff that you've heard so far is really, really out there, well, it starts to get even, even more crazy from this point. And as I've told you from the very beginning, all of this stuff that I'm telling you is true and 100% identifiable and verifiable. And you can go back to the books and sources and see this. Um, one of the things that we do on the hotconflict.com website is we dispel myths and communicate the old knowledge and understandings of Islam in a way that is easy to understand for a Western audience, giving people references to current information so that they can relate the concepts together. And so sometimes there's a gap in understanding the translation, and sometimes there's also a gap in the way a story is actually communicated. And so one of the things we always do at HotConflict.com is tell it to you in a way that you've probably never heard it before. And so if you haven't been freaked out yet, you're about to get into some freaky parts. Well, we just finished with Moses, and unfortunately Moses, Allah have mercy on him, had an interesting blessing that he was able to speak to Allah, but one of the problems that he had is he was never able to lead his people into the promised land. And that's because maybe uh, Allah, the Lord Most High, and we said Allah, the term, refers to the God, was somewhat upset with the children of Israel because of the trouble they gave Moses. Peace and blessings be upon him. He had some rough times. But there got to be a point where the children of Israel, the descendants of Jacob and Moses and Isaac from the great father Abraham who decided to make sure that from that point on in this planet everybody would remember that we are the children of Adam and our job is to believe in the Lord Most High. And from that point on, this should never be forgotten. Well, the Jews, as we're going to call them now with all due respect and no animosity whatsoever for my uh, brothers and sisters out there, were trying their best to protect themselves as the people still holding on to the truth. And they were the protectors of the truth at that time. And they were the ones still worshipping the one true Lord. And we know that there were strange things going on in Egypt, but there were also strange things going on all over the planet. We know that we have strange tales from Babylon and Sumeria and the Anunnaki race and the Gajiji, as they're described, as we might refer to as the, uh, the small greys or the greens right now, uh, one of the uh, Jinn races. They were there, and we know that even those ancient societies had information that they had gotten from some of the other races, perhaps benevolent at some period or malevolent, we're not really sure. They did teach them science and technology and healing tactics, but, and we're also discovering that the ancient uh, Sumerians had 
uh, electricity in sh some shape or form, and so they might have been able to get that. But there were strange things going on in the world. Well, since we're talking about electricity, and we mentioned electricity in, in Egypt showing up, and we mentioned electricity in Sumeria, and they're starting to discover that. Well, so many times you can have any Muslim sheikh tell you that electricity is something to do from the jinn. And in modern times, you'll hear many people in the West go, ha, ha, ha that's this, this silly, silly thing. Oh, you mean, you know, when you turn the light bulb on, there's a little jinny running around uh, like I dream of genie. And so that's one of the misinformation concepts that is, again, taken from the Eastern societies and brought to the West. Okay, let's turn these into little fictional myth mythical tales and fictional stories. That way the true information is not there. And so if you understand the references properly, then you know that all these different ancient societies possibly got technology from the jinns or the uh, extra dimensional beings of how they are able to use their own powers, which is described in Islam as smokeless fire, so some kind of electricity, plasma, energy type technology, and, and use possibly the other races were able to explain and teach people here on earth how to use certain elements or minerals or rocks or understood scientifically more about things than the uh, average human on the earth at that time. And so we know that there was starting to come a change and there were a lot of strange practices such as alchemy and weird things and we don't know how much of uh, interchanging technology was going on. The other thing that we do know of is that there was widespread cross-breeding between the jinn races, the other alien races, as we'll refer to them in modern times, uh, the extra-dimensional beings who can come to Earth and are physical in nature as well, there was inbreeding with humans, and that resulted in all kinds of hybrid creatures, and resulting in humans that were possibly having mixed DNA and blood, and resulting in strange kinds of morphings of creatures on the Earth. And this is one of the reasons why the Jews did so much to protect their own bloodline and made sure that they were only intermarrying within themselves. And historically, this becomes important, and, and you see why they've done that. And so it was at this time that, <clears throat> in the story, we know that the, the uh, Jews didn't want to go into their area that they were promised because they didn't want to attack the other side because the other side was apparently having what? Well, in the myth and the histories, they'll tell you the name of the character was Goliath, but apparently Goliath was some kind of hybrid with one of the uh, jinn races. Now, again, here in Christianity, you hear many people talking about Nephilim. And so I have to go back to the fundamentals, because we said, what is it that we're talking about? What is the first fundamental? <laughs> La ilaha illallah. There is only one God. Right? There's only one God. And the fundamentals of faith have always been the same. There are angels made of light, and they obey the Lord, and they have no free will. And then there are jinns of multiple races, with various forms, flying and not flying, but they have free will. Some are evil, some are benevolent, some are malev malevolent, some are the, the minions and army of Satan, the major, large, alien jinn from before the creation of Adam. And if you don't understand what I mean, go back to the beginning of the story. <laughs> go back to the beginning of the story. And so what happens in the dramatic scene that we all know, but nobody pays attention to, is that David, a small person by stature, but having the true light, understands what everybody's been telling you the whole time that the fundamentals are the same. We are the believers in the Lord, Most High. This is His earth. If it is destined for us to defeat, then it is destined to, for us to defeat. And so he goes up and faces Goliath, the huge behemoth hybrid creature that the Christians falsely call possibly a Nephilim as a fallen angel, which is incorrect again. There's always some misinformation out there, so you have to understand the truth. But unlike the story that you probably heard, Goliath, uh, David does what? Takes the stone and swings it to Adam using a man-made device. 
And again, as you will see from the Quran, right? It is not you who guides a stone, but it is Allah that is the one who's power over all things. I, 